Some suppose reality is divided by a veil. On one side of the veil is the natural, observable world. Beyond the veil lies another realm of spirits, angels, demons, and of course, gods. These beings are supposed to inhabit an unobservable, supernatural domain that is off-limits to science. How do we know these spirits, angels, demons and gods are there? Some suppose special people, such as psychics and gurus, can glimpse through the veil and tell us about what lies beyond. For example, spiritualists claim they can communicate with those who have passed over to the other side. Others claim to encounter angels and even gods while praying or meditating. But how confident can we be that these mysterious beings are really there? Many atheists argue the world contains too much suffering for it to be the creation of a good god. There are wars, diseases and natural disasters. Horrific human and animal suffering is built into the very fabric of the world we're forced to inhabit. Isn't this good evidence that even if there is a creator, he is not all-powerful and all-good. Of course, the faithful try to explain the suffering. Some talk about free will. They say God could have made us puppet beings that always behaved well. But if we're God's puppets, we're not responsible for what we do. God cut our strings so that we can freely choose to do good. But then some of us choose to do evil and cause suffering. That's the price God pays for our free will. So have we shown it's reasonable to believe in God after all? I don't think so. Suppose that, after a bump on the head, I come to believe the universe was created not by a good God, but by an evil God. I believe there's a single, all-powerful creator whose malice knows no bounds and whose wickedness is beyond our comprehension. Who believes in a God like that? Almost no one. Why not? Because the world would look much more like a torture chamber if it were created by such a powerful and wicked being. There's too much love and laughter and too many people being kind and helping each other for this to be the creation of an evil god. Yet notice I can explain why my evil god allows good in the same way religious folk explain why their good god allows evil. I can say my evil god could have made us puppet beings that always did bad things, but if we're his puppets, we're not responsible for what we do. That's why evil God cut our strings and set us free, to allow us to freely choose to do evil. Unfortunately for evil God, some of us then choose to do good deeds. That's the price evil God pays to allow moral evil. Have I shown that belief in an evil God isn't absurd? No, of course not. Sure, I can cook up such ingenious explanations to defend both belief in a good god and belief in an evil god. But still, we can be pretty sure there's no evil god, can't we? Mm -hmm. So why can't we be pretty sure there's no good god either? We may not know why the universe exists, but surely we are justified in supposing it is not the creation of either of these two gods.